Hello Legends. So in this video, I'm going to be speaking about the differences between ChatGPT projects and custom GPTs. So I just launched a video about um, uh, like a how to use ChatGPT projects, um, features, use cases, and a comparison to Claude projects. And I already had a couple of questions pop up about, you know, what, what's the difference between a ChatGPT project and a custom GPT. So they have two distinct use cases. And in this video, I want to be exploring both those use cases. I look at the documentation of both the uh, ChatGPT project and custom GPTs. And I've got some nice visuals and analogies to basically help you kind of understand the distinction of both tools and how you can use them. So on this worksheet, I have um, an initial yeah, visual presentation here of the um, key differences, right? So a ChatGPT project at high level, it's basically a way for you to organize uh, chats, files, and custom instructions. So if we go across to the documentation using projects in ChatGPT, the primary purpose is to keep chats, files, and custom instructions in one place. Um, and then the use case here is either to you know use it for ongoing work. So you can create a workspace if you wanna do like birthday planning or trip planning. Um, and you can set up custom instructions for that workspace, AKA project, and you could upload custom files into there. And then every new chat you generate from that from that project has that context. Um, or it's to help keep things very tidy. So let's say you've got hundreds and hundreds of chats in your chat GPT window and you just want to categorize and group them to kind of keep things looking a little bit neat. Um, you can do the exact same thing as well. So that's the uh, high level use case of chat GPT projects. If you want to learn more about it, I'll link the video in the description of this, uh, in the, of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out. But um, yeah, so this is the, the key features. You're, you have organized workspaces within your chat GPT interface. We can group related chats and files and custom instructions. And yeah, you can separate like separation of concerns. So you can group all of your like, like for like chats within one folder and you have everything related to that specific task in that one folder. Um, and you also have the same core AI capabilities. So the model that we're using is GPT-40 the model cannot be changed. So as soon as you create a project inside um, like a chat GPT project, any file that you, any chat that you generate within that project is gonna be using GPT-40. And you can move chats between projects or even out of a project into your regular chat GPT window. Um, anything that you move into it, it's gonna be using GPT-40. So uh, yeah, just be mindful of that. And because it's using GPT-40, GPT-40, <laughs> kind of saying it so many times, has access to the Canvas advanced data analysis. This is where you're running Python scripts in a backend when you're doing analysis on like, let's say a, an Excel file that you upload. Um, you can also do image generation and then you can search the web. So this is all thanks to this GPT-40 model. And because we're using that uh, within the project, we, all, we also have these features. So the key distinction here, what you really need to focus on is that uh, when you're looking at custom GPTs, you're actually impacting the AI behavior. So uh, custom GPT to now flip it up is um, like you would have seen the custom GPT uh, marketplace where you can actually buy, you can commoditize GPTs that you make, right? But before we get into this, I'm gonna go into this little create tab here. So when you create a custom GPT, what you're actually doing in the back end is you're configuring the AI model. So you're changing the core prompt that the um, GPT model that you're creating here uses. Now there is an underlying model that OpenAI uh, ingests as like the very backend um, prompt for all of their chat GPT models. Um, so what you're doing here is kind of uh, overlaying your own prompt onto there. But the, the, the main, like the important thing is what you're like, you're actually changing the um, model's behavior because you're uploading uh, the actual prompt for the model as opposed to in chat GPT projects you're just using the basic version of ChatGPT 4.0 with no custom instructions. Like, I mean, no prompt, no custom prompting into here. So there are guardrails because you've said, here's the high level instructions that you're using. And here's a high level, like here's the files that you can use. But these are guardrails. The actual GPT 4.0 model, you're not injecting any prompting into that. You're just giving high level instructions. Whereas in your custom GPT, you are injecting into the prompt. So this is like, Custom GPTs are used to create, and if we go into the documentation, they're used to create, um, it's basically a tool, uh, a, a very specific purpose tool. So um, GPTs are a way for you to create a tailored version of chat GPT that has a specific use case. 
um, some things here are you're creating a maths tutor, you're creating a uh, chemistry assistant, or you might have seen some examples where people download all of like uh, Shakespeare's, um, yeah, like Shakespeare's plays, all of his writing, they upload it into a custom GPT. And then now this chat GPT that when, when you're chatting with it, it's actually like Shakespeare born again, so to speak. So um, that's the key difference here. So with the chat GPT project, you're not actually um, putting any prompts into the chat GPT, into the AI. You're only setting up guardrails within the context of a folder. Um, and in that folder, again, you can group related chats, you can have uh, specific files, and you can have custom high level instructions, but nothing with a prompt. And because we are using GPT 4.0, we have access to image generation, web search, data analysis, stuff like that. And then for custom GPTs, you're creating a specific, um, like an agent for a specific use case. Uh, so you're changing the actual prompt. And on top of that, you also have uh, tool calling. So you can actually integrate with different APIs, AKA you can plug into different softwares, uh, like you plug into a database, plug into Zendesk, plug into HubSpot and to go high level with custom GPTs because you have the access of um, like using APIs. But here you cannot use tool calling. You can just use the basic features, which once again are canvas, uh, data analysis, uh, image generation and web search. But for custom GPTs, when you're actually creating it, um, just to show you, you can actually you do the exact same thing. So web search, canvas, uh, image generation, and this is the data analysis. So code interpreter is just basically running the Python scripts in a backend um, when you're analyzing, again, Excel files. But then you have create new action. And these custom actions are how you integrate with, um, yeah, these different, like it's basically an API call. So for example, here you could go, um, you could create an entire backend in make.com that plugs into different tools. Like you can, you can make a custom action that will then fire off to make.com and make.com can create and post for you on your Facebook or post for you on your LinkedIn, or it can plug into a database um, and it can, you know, retrieve information from a database that you have, or it can create a new event in your CRM. So that's, again, when you're creating a custom GPT, you're creating uh, an essentially an AI agent that has access to external tools. And then your chat GPT project. And I know I'm kind of pushing this point more and more and more, but hopefully you understand this is more about organizing things to be neat. And this is more about like creating um, a highly specialized tool that you can use to do different things. So scrolling down a little bit more, we have some more information here about the purpose. So you can organize workflows. Um, your customization are these guardrails where you can upload, you know, high level instructions. Um, you can upload files and group chats. The use case is to manage separate tasks in a very easy way. And the analogy, I'm going to leave this for a little bit. I'm going to, that's in the next page. That's going to be actually, it's going to help clarify things even more. Um, and then integration features are all these things that I mentioned here already a few times. Then on the right hand side, we have a custom GPT. So the purpose is to create a specialized AI agent for a specialized task. So um, yeah, kind of you're creating a, uh, a tool that only does one specific thing extremely well. Um, so you can edit the core prompt. So you're actually changing the AI's behavior for that specific purpose. Um, and you can build assistants like math tutors, a games rule explainer. I think that was one of the examples that um, OpenAI used when they released the chat GPT, uh, custom GPTs. Uh, the analogy, we're going to get to that in a second. And then the integration features here is this function calling and basically API access. So yeah, what you would use this for is to be your AI agent assistant. And what you would use this for is to just categorize and organize all of your chats and your files um, into one place. So scrolling down, we have a, an image here of a lecture hall. Now, I'm going to use this image to explain the differences between a uh, chat GPT project and a custom GPT. So uh, like we spoke about before, if we're on this page, so I'm just going to scroll up. The, a project is a way to keep your chats, files, and custom instructions in one place. So looking at this uh, picture of a lecture hall, uh, within, the, within the context of this lecture hall, let's assume this is a project. And you can see we have a very nicely organized way of keeping all of these students. And let's say each student is just a chat. 
right? It's a GPT-40 model. And let's say right now the, the lecture is about uh, chemistry. So chemical, something about that, right? So it's, it's chemistry. So everyone is here specifically to learn about chemistry. You have specific files, which are about chemistry. And then each person, AKA the analogy is they're, they're like a GPT-40 chat. They might have uh, laptops and with laptops, they could do um, image generation. They could do data analysis. They could do searching the web. Um, and they also might have like notebooks. So with notebooks, they could do yeah data analysis. You know what I mean? So they all have different features, laptops, notebooks, water bottles. Each person is a chat. They're organized nicely and neatly. Um, and then you have specific files specifically for this project, AKA this lecture hall. So from this example, you can see that, okay, in this case, the ChatGPT project um, is a highly specialized room. And then as soon as you leave this room and then you can go into like the next lecture hall, which could be about psychology, it's gonna have different files. It's gonna have a different purpose in there. Uh, and the students will be there for a different interest. So all the chats will be about psychology. And as soon as you leave that room, everything stays in that room. When you're in like the corridor, there's no files, there's no custom instructions. None of that follows you around. Okay, now looking at custom GPTs. So again, in the context of the lecture hall, it's gonna be hard to see here, but you have the, um, what are they called? The professor at the front of the lecture hall. In this context, he is the custom GPT. He's got 30 years of experience on chemistry. He's done heaps of lab work. He knows everything. He's got all the textbooks. Um, he also has custom tool calling where he can actually generate these lecture slides for you and show you what you're gonna be learning. He is the expert, he creates the exam. You go to him for all of your questions. He is the uh, domain specific expert, right? That's, that's what he does. Um, so in the context of this lecture hall, he is the custom GPT. Again, he can bring in external like tools to demonstrate certain concepts for chemistry. And then in the next lecture hall for the psychology lecture hall, that professor will be the custom GPT in that, in that scenario, in that setting. So actually an interesting, an interesting uh, t like thought that I had um, when I was creating the, these slides was, okay, well, is there a way for me to have a custom GPT within a chat GPT project? Because I would love to have like a highly specialized um, professor within the context of a lecture hall where all of my chats are firstly like highly tuned to be for that one specific purpose. But then the context in which they operate, AKA the ChatGPT project, AKA the lecture hall, also has extra custom instructions and custom files. I'm not sure how much of that would cancel each other out, um, but you cannot do it. You cannot have it, and maybe it's just for now, um, but you can't do it because you're using the GPT-40 model. So when you're creating a custom GPT, um, that's like from, from what I under, I already tried this in a, in a background already. I tried putting a, um, a chat that I generated with one of my custom GPTs into a chat GPT project and it wouldn't transfer across. So it wouldn't work. And I believe that's because the, uh, the model that you're using for the chat GPT, um, sorry, the custom GPT, it's not like, it might be GPT-40 in the back end, but you're, you're essentially, um, yeah, you're creating a new model and it's not compatible in the chat GPT project. So maybe sometime in the future, but again, I don't know how useful that is. It's just a thought that I had um, when I was looking at this image. I'm like, oh, that would be actually pretty freaking cool to have. So um, yeah, hopefully this analogy now shows you um, that the lecture hall itself is a uh, place where you group students and let's say the interest or the, the stuff that's being taught has custom files in here. As soon as you leave this lecture hall, go to the next one, to the psychology lecture hall, you're learning that psychology in there. Um, and you kind of group like the same kind of stuff into there. So students that want to learn about psychology, um, the instructor that is teaching you psychology, uh, the files that are being shown to you on the on the whiteboard. So yeah, hopefully this is um, super clear for you now. And then the final thing I want to speak about is the nuances. So um, yes, okay, so let, let's start looking at this. So custom GPTs can be shared with different people. They can also be put onto the custom GPT marketplace where you can commoditize what you build. And you can also find other highly special, specialized agents. So looking at the uh, GPT documentation, Actually, it's better to, for me to just show you here. Yeah, actually, no. When you when you create a custom GPT, uh, you can actually get the URL of the GPT. You can set permissions to be public or private. If you set it to be public, you can actually share that URL with your different people in your work. So let's say you have an e-commerce store and you create a 
custom AI marketing assistant that will actually generate emails for you and then it will send them off to Clever You and post them and send it to your customers. You can get that and then you can give it to everyone else on your marketing team. Uh, so they can all access your custom GPT or you can go into the marketplace like what we had before, but I think my internet's cut out here. You can go into the marketplace and you can also either sell your custom GPTs where people will pay you to use them or different companies like Canva will create a custom GPT to, might be, to maybe be like a, like a support assistant that'll help you use their tool a bit more effectively. Um, right now, you cannot, uh, let me see this. You cannot share your um, uh, ChatGPT projects. Now, I'm not sure that you'd wanna share your ChatGPT project at this stage anyway, but you probably, you know, you could probably share your password for your account and someone logs in and they have access to your, um, to your ChatGPT project, but there's no custom um, ChatGPT project marketplace, at least right now. Uh, I don't really think there will be, um, but yeah, so you, you, you cannot share um, your ChatGPT project. I think collaboration in the future will be a thing. So you'll be able to like share the project with different people in your team. Maybe if you have like a business account or something like that, but that's uh, one of the nuanced differences. So right now, um, custom GPTs can be shared with different people on your team, or you can put them onto a marketplace and there is a marketplace. Um, or, and but chat, chat GPT projects, there's no marketplace and they cannot be shared right now. So I think collaboration in the future will be a thing. Yeah, so custom GPTs um, use tool calling. So the example that I gave before, you can plug it into make.com. So then you can connect it to a database. You can add, or you can get uh, information from that database. You can use it to post on LinkedIn or on Facebook. Whereas chat GPT projects cannot access tool calling. They cannot access tool calling specifically because this is all that they have access to. So they, they can search the web, generate images, uh, run Python on the back end to um, analyze Excel files or, or use the canvas, so for coding. Um, but the model itself does not, whoops, the model itself does not have access to um, to tool calling. So that's that's a unique feature for only for custom GPTs at this stage. I don't know if it's gonna be um, any different. And again, like I mentioned before, you cannot put a custom GPT chat inside a um, chat GPT project. So yeah, there's no tool calling. We spoke about the different features here. Um, and we spoke about custom GPTs can also do image generation, internet search and advanced analytics. Okay, so it's actually x me out of there. Sorry guys, but yeah, it can do all these things. Whatever, whatever we see here, the custom GPT can do that. Um, and yeah, over here we have both GPTs and, and chat GPT projects. They can run the Python code in the back end. And again, this is just the advanced analysis feature. Um, and the final thinking point was the one that I brought up a little bit earlier was, imagine from our lecture hall analogy, what if we were able to get a custom GPT inside a chat GPT project? Um, right now it's not possible, but um, yeah, I'll kind of leave you with that thought anyway. I hope this was insightful to you guys. Once again, if you want to learn more about uh, ChatGPT projects, how to use it, a walkthrough, I'll go through the documentation a little bit more. I also show you two cool use cases um, on how to use uh, ChatGPT projects. I also so show you some success that I've had in using projects uh, as a tool in general. I've used Claude projects um, to help me when I was making code for some of my videos. Um, and yeah, I'll link that video in the description of this video. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think about the idea of putting custom GPTs into a chat GPT project. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, help me out with the algorithm. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. See ya.